Hello, readers. Hello, the internet. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson, your Popverse host here in the Popverse, which is, of course, a virtual realm created by Read Pop right ahead of Emerald City Comic Con, my friends. It is right around the corner in Seattle, Washington, and we have the biggest, the bestest writer's block that we have ever had. So leading up to that, I wanted to chat with some of the incredible talent who is joining us. So please put your hands together in the traditional Potverse round of applause for Marissa Meyer, author of the Lunar Chronicles, The Renegades Trilogy, Heartless, Wires, Nerve, Sitter. Please join me in welcoming Marissa Meyer. Hi, Marissa. How are you doing today? I am fantastic. How are you doing today? So excited to be here. So excited for Emerald City Comic Con, which we're going to chat about. So, I mean, first and foremost, let me ask, what do you love most about conventions? Oh, people watching and seeing the Ooh. cosplay. Definitely my favorite thing. I mean, there's a lot of things that I love, but that's that's got to be the top. Um, I come from a family of costumers. I haven't cosplayed in a long time um, just because I never learned how to sew and like that's a problem. Um, but when I was growing up, my my uncle and my mom and my dad and like my aunt and like all these people in my family used to go to conventions and cosplay. Uh, and so for a long time, my mom, who's an excellent seamstress, would make me costumes and I love it. And I love seeing the amount of work and thought that people put into it. And some of them are just so clever and I just love it. Okay. Since we evoked cosplay, I have to ask if you did know how to sew and you had an infinite amount of free time to work on your cosplay, which character, yours or someone else, would you be cosplaying as at Emerald City Comic Con? <sighs> Oh, I should have <laughs> predicted that you would ask me that and given it a little bit of thought. I definitely did not. <laughs> um, I I would have to go old school back to my my nerd roots and say Sailor Moon. You just just right to my heart. What a good answer. <laughs> Kindreds. I know. I was like, we can't get into Sailor Moon talk because it'll never end. And people will be like, I didn't come here to hear you. <laughs> But maybe they did. <laughs> okay, if you want to hear us talk about Sailor Moon, let us know in the comments. We can come back and do 2.0 ahead of another convention. I love it. <laughs> but for you as a creator, uh, what is unique about interacting with your audiences at a convention versus maybe when someone runs up at you at a Starbucks and says, I love Cinder, it changed my life? Which happens like on a daily basis. I assume. Right. Yeah, no, not for writers. <laughs> um, what's different? So, I mean, I love meeting readers and I'm just as of this recording, I just got home from book tour. And so I had a whole week of getting to go and meet wonderful readers and have fantastic events. Um, there is a different sort of energy, though, when you're at a convention center full of people and cosplayers and people are, you know, buying artwork and they're going to panels. And there is such an enormous sense of camaraderie. And there's just this idea of like, I may not be exactly into the thing that you're into, but we are already on the similar ground and that we are fans of something and we love something and we are here to just be excited about whatever that is. Uh, so there's just a really cool energy at conventions and that just makes like the whole experience of meeting readers and signing books and talking to people and taking photos, everything. You just feel like you're with your people there, which is so great. That's so beautiful. And you're in a really unique position that you kind of straddle the line of graphic novels and prose and cosplay. You're kind of the queen of all things conventions in a lot of ways. Thank you so much. Can I put that on my next book cover? You may, you may. You could quote it to us. <laughs> what inspired you to want to sort of cross those lines and dip your toes into the graphic novel world? So I love graphic novels. Um, being a fan of anime and Sailor Moon and also manga growing up, uh, I, I loved it as a, a medium. I love to read them. I never got, I mean, I tried, I tried to draw, but I was never very good at it. Um, but when I was a teenager, I used to work with one of my best friends on making graphic novels and comics. And I would kind of come up with a story and then she would draw and it was so much fun. And so these days, um, so I have two published graphic novels and I have two more in the works, um, hopefully coming out in the next number of years. 
And I don't really know what in my brain, like when a new story idea comes to me, why some are like clearly a novel and some are clearly a graphic novel, but it just kind of seems to work out that way. Sometimes something pops into my head and I can see it in a very visual format and kind of uh, get this impression of like how the the panels would be um, blocked out and, and what the illustrator could contribute that I couldn't do in prose. And so sometimes it just feels really natural. And I have so enjoyed it. I love working with illustrators uh, because they are so talented and have a talent that I do not. And so that's really fun. As like, I'm gonna geek out a little bit. As a fan of yours and of your work, it's been so fascinating to hear you just drop like Sailor Moon, anime, and all these like little references that I would not maybe have traditionally thought would inspire you in your work. So. I love to like dig in on that a little bit what are some like unexpected places that you have drawn inspiration from oh uh i don't know how unexpected it is um because <laughs> people who like have known me and heard me speak i i don't know uh but definitely sailor moon is a huge influence mm -hmm. um for my first series the lunar chronicles um firefly was a big one um star wars was a big one um cowboy bebop uh going back to the anime world yes ensemble cast was huge um and then more recently for um my book that just came out uh which is called with a little luck and it's actually a contemporary <laughs> romance but the mm -hmm. character is a nerd and so he you know plays dungeons and dragons and collects funko dolls and draws comics and all of these so this was a fun book because even though it's not one of my my sci-fi or fantasy novels, I probably got to put more nerd references into it than anything else. And so that was just pure joy for me. I it's, It feels like we've accidentally stumbled into what if Marissa was a boy nerd? And we get to see that <laughs> through like the alternate universe version of you. <laughs> yes, I would be Jude, totally. But I also like as a girl nerd and a straight girl nerd, mm -hmm. like I have such a crush on Jude and I don't care if that's weird to have a crush on your own character. I think he is darling and I totally would have had the hots for him as a teenage girl. I think if anyone's allowed to, it's definitely the creator. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, I don't know, maybe that's strange, but I, it's part of writing romance, I mm -hmm. feel, is, is falling in love with your characters so that you can understand why the, the love interest falls in love with them um, and also vice versa. So. so wait, who have you fallen hardest for? Of, uh, all of them, all of them. <laughs> We're trying to give... AO3 and fanfiction.net something to write about here. <laughs> if somebody is coming to Emerald City Comic Con or a future convention or a book signing and they've like super enjoyed our little conversation so far and they want to know what's the first book that they should pick up of yours, what's your recommendation for dipping your toe in the Meyerverse? That is such a tricky question because I know I have written a lot of things at this point. Um, <laughs> And honestly, it is so dependent on what a reader is looking for. Um, mm -hmm. I've written in quite a lot of different genres. Um, so if you're there for contemporary, I'd start with Instant Karma. If you want sci-fi, I'd go with uh, Cinder. If you want more fantasy-based, you can pick up either Gilded or Heartless. Um, and then if you like love superheroes and like want something that's, you know, something new to Marvel and DC, um, I also have my Renegades trilogy. So that was a non-answer to that question, but it really does depend on what somebody's looking for. It just gives people a buying list for when they come and see you in person. They've got to get 10 books and then 10 signatures on their books and then yeah. produce 10 posts about how much they loved all of the books. So that was the obvious answer. Buy all the books. Why exactly. would you limit yourself to just one? <laughs> yeah, no such thing as too much. Did you uh, did you know that when you Google your name, the top autofill is, does Cursed by Marissa Meyer have a happy ending? Thoughts? <laughs> that is so funny. Um, and, and that's a, actually a good question because my book Heartless is kind of a tragedy. And so now I think people are scared that when I write more, <laughs> more epic fantasies that like, everyone's going to die. Um, I, is it, split? I don't know. I'm just going to say yes. It actually is a happy ending. Um, but I don't think that's a spoiler because like Heartless was the only book of mine that did not have a happy ending. I, I love happy endings, generally speaking. What is it about happy endings as a trope that appeals to you as a creator? 
I like the the sense that you're you can drag your characters through everything and mm -hmm. and I like to really make them work for their happy <laughs> ending. <laughs> um and so then by the time and I, I want there to be multiple points throughout a story where the readers feel like it's impossible. There's no way out of this. There's no way that they're gonna survive or they're gonna um you know manage to to fall in love or they're gonna overcome the antagonist like whatever it is I want readers to really feel the suspense of like how can we possibly make it through this so that when we get there it feels so rewarding and like like it really had to be earned okay so my inevitable follow-up who do you think you've dragged the hardest mm. <laughs> huh that is an excellent question uh i would say possibly Cyrilda, uh who is the the main character in gilded and cursed mm -hmm. um i don't know <laughs> or Cinder. like they've all they've both dealt with like a lot of stuff uh yeah and a lot of tragedy and even though both series do end with happy endings there's still i mean people die they lose people like there's still a lot of hardship that they both had to go through I love that answer because I would have guessed Cinder. So you kind of like blew my mind. Yeah, with I'm that. trying to like, like think of like the body count in my head. Like who <laughs> lost more people that they care about? And I'm pretty sure Cyrilda takes the cake on that. I, I really want um, a book talker or some, maybe I'll do this where someone reads one of the books and there's just the counter of all the bodies as they drop. <laughs> yeah. <it's>, yes. <laughs> sorry, so, not <laughs> no, not sorry. Speaking of Cinder, though, um, a little birdie, by which I mean you in another interview, uh, has told me that Cinder started life as a NaNoWriMo project. So I would love to know in your maybe post NaNoWriMo life, what is your workflow like when you sit down to start a project? What's the day to day? How much coffee are you drinking? Oh my gosh, I have my coffee right here. My husband yes. brought it to me right before this interview because he's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, a lot, a lot of coffee. Uh, yeah, so I, I still love NaNoWriMo. I still participated in it, participate in it when I can. Um, and so I just really like the the kind of process that is encouraged when you do NaNoWriMo um, mm -hmm. or National Novel Writing Month, if there's people who have no idea what we're talking about. Um, <laughs> and so I still, I'm an outliner. I like to kind of plan out as much as I can beforehand. I like to have a, a good sense of what is going to happen and the major points that are going to happen throughout the story. Uh, and once I have that ready to go, I try to draft that first draft as quickly as I can. Mm -hmm. um, and that varies. Like some of the, the shorter books or the contemporaries, that might be um, one or two months. For some of the longer, more more complicated with the world building and whatnot, um, that could be anywhere from like three to six months. Uh, but I try to draft it as quickly as I can. And then um, make a whole long list of all the things that are terrible about it and need to be fixed cool. and tackle revisions. Um, and I don't mind. Actually, I enjoy revisions. I feel like the first draft is just like trying to figure out what the story is, but knowing that mm -hmm. it's not very good at this point. And it's when I get into revisions that I can see it starting to become the story that I always hoped it would be. Um, so that's for me when a lot of the magic happens. That's actually so beautiful. And I love the way that you talk about planning, because I think a lot of people who have attempted, particularly something like NaNoWriMo, National Level Writing Month, uh, we all try to do it as pantsers, which means flying by the seat of your pants. So to hear you talk about the value of plotting like really is really, really nice. <laughs> Thank you. It does not work for everyone. And so mm -hmm. I, I always like for aspiring writers, you know, I know some people will hear me say that I, I like to outline. And so then they think they have to. Um, I certainly know lots of successful writers who don't outline, and so it's not necessary. But for me, I have tried pantsing, and mm -hmm. I just get overcome with the like the anxiety and the fear of the blank page, and like not knowing what if I write a hundred thousand words and they don't make any sense and they don't go anywhere, and none of it's you know that the story itself doesn't work. So when I plan it and I make an outline at least I can see like, okay, this is a workable story that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. And then if and when things change, which they always do as you're writing, that's fine. Like I, it's a lot easier to adjust the outline than it is to adjust an entire novel. 
And when you're in the middle of plotting, scripting, writing, rewriting, like Frank Herbert writing Dune, wandering around the desert and completely restructuring your books, are you also living in a lot of the inspiration? Are you watching, reading a lot of genre similar to what you're writing? Or does it all just live in that little brain? No, I do. I love to immerse myself in whatever it is I'm writing at the time. Um, so like, I remember when I was writing the Lunar Chronicles, um, which again, very much inspired by Firefly, whenever I felt like I had lost sense of the world that I was trying to create, I would just go watch an episode of Firefly and like, let that fill my brain again with the aesthetics of it and the um, just kind of that, that gritty futuristic vibe that it had, um, which was very much in line with what I was trying to accomplish. Uh, and same with, um, uh, writing Gilded and Cursed, I would, you know, read a lot of more fantasy or read more um, historical that kind of took place in a similar time period with writing with a little luck. Now we're delving into more um, uh, contemporaries, more romances. Um, also reading, this is my first time writing a book that is first person from a boy's point of view. So reading more male and uh, protagonists and more male authors and that sort of thing too. So because we are leading up to Emerald City Comic Con, I would love to know what is the question that you get asked most often at conventions? And maybe what's a question that you wish people would ask you more often at conventions? Oh, or an what? area you, you'd like to chat with people about? I'm trying to prep people so they know what to say when they come up to oh, the table. Oh gosh, I have no idea though. <laughs> <laughs> what do I get asked? I mean, people always want to know um, where the ideas came from, of course. Mm -hmm one that all authors get um, and people ask for advice, writing advice comes up frequently. Um, what would people, I don't know, like what, what have I cosplayed? And then I could like whip out my picture of 20 year old Marissa as princess Zelda, which was like one of the highlights of my life. So <laughs> she says it's a spry 22 year old. <laughs> I said, she says it's a spry 22 year old. Yes, I definitely did not have my 40th birthday two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, and is there any cosplay, any characters of yours that you are dying to see people show up with IRL? Oh, I, you know, I have been really lucky that I've seen a lot of cosplay of my characters, um, which I know and it's really good too. <laughs> it's really good. I know. So. I, I mean, I just, I feel so thrilled whenever I see it. Um, trying to think if there's like any, anything that I haven't seen. Uh, I don't think I've seen any of the, the, the like the wolf soldiers, like the half transformed wolf soldiers would be cool. There's also like, I've seen a lot of Jest and Kath from Heartless, <laughs> but not very many Hattas. Um, and I love, I mean, I love all my characters, so that's hard to, you know, be like, I just really love this one, but, but those are, those are options if anybody's trying to come up with something last minute. <laughs> also some nice group cosplays if we're all going as friends to the signings. <laughs> yes, I know. The group cosplays are my favorite. <laughs> all right, Marissa, lastly, but not leastly, because if I keep you any longer, we're never going to stop. I would love to know ahead of Emerald City Comic Con, what are you geeking out about that you are not working on? So what are you enjoying just for funsies? No writing in Spo. Oh. In all of your free time on your book tour. <laughs> <laughs> so I the thing that I most recently loved was the movie Argyle. Oh um God. and I knew nothing about it other than it the main character was a writer and there were like spies after her. And like those are two of my favorite things. And I thought it was hysterical. I thought it was so campy. I mean, just like the amount of camp was so over the top, but I love that. Yes. Um, and so I just thought it was a, a wild romp and I really thought it was hilarious and I loved it. Amazing. Before I let you go, will you let everybody know where they can follow you on socials and where they can like tweet and comment at you that they want your spy novel when you are done with this? <laughs> Put it on the list. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, I am mostly on Instagram at Marissa Meyer author. Thank you so much. Thank you. And if you are coming to Emerald City Comic Con, don't forget on Friday and Sunday, you can see Marissa in writer's block. And maybe if you're really nice, you can see her wandering around the convention center. And you can just say, hi, I want to talk to you about Sailor Moon. I love you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. And just, just me. 
okay, okay, okay. Writer's Block is bigger and badder than ever this year, and I am super, super hyped about it. I'm so glad that we got to give you just a tease of some of the incredible talent that is coming. If you are coming, there are just a few tickets left and you see me or Veronica or Graham or anybody from P Team Popverse, please be sure to stop us and say hello. I also really love Popverse as much as I love the Lunar Chronicles. Thank you for bringing it to us because we're very, very passionate about all the things that we do. I will see you in Seattle, my friends. Stay safe and I will see you next time.